Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So how are you this wonderful morning? Satisfaction for the thirsty soul. That's the theme of our homily this morning. Satisfaction for the thirsty soul. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 42, verse 2, Scripture says, My soul is thirsting for the Lord. When can I see him face to face? My soul is thirsty for the Lord, the Lord of my life, my hope, my joy. When can I behold his face? You remember that famous quotation from St. Augustine? God, you've created us for yourself. Our soul cannot find rest unless in you. I don't know if you are familiar with also a related quotation from the mystic, St. Catherine of Siena. God has created us above all things, that our satisfaction comes from one who is greater than us, and it is only God. In every heart, there is this insatiability that is rooted in every soul that can only be filled, can only be satisfied by the almighty living God. It seems like when God created us, he left a little hole. That was how Fu Munshin, Venerable Fu Munshin described it. He, he, he intentionally left a little hole in our hearts. And that's the source of our desire. We keep looking, we keep searching, searching for joy, for meaning, searching for peace, searching for life. And people go different routes in search. Frustrated, dejected, but those who find that real source and life that fills that hole are satisfied. The rest aren't. And we see in the stories we read from the scripture today, the journey of the people of Israel, we tell us a real story, one of the historical books about their journey in the wilderness. And then the physical thirst for water at Massa and Meribah. That's Exodus chapter 17. That story has huge spiritual significance for believers. Their journey in the wilderness is, tip, is, like, is, 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 is reference to a typology of the journey of believers, the pilgrim church. And as we're going through the arid, dry land, our soul is thirsty thirsty for the living water. In the gospel, we see another woman, a woman who has been wandering from place to place, relationship to relationship, broken relationship to bro broken relationship, rejection from a culture, rejection from the people because she was an outcast. A halo in the Jewish culture was treated as an outcast. No hope, no satisfaction. She was being used. She was looking for peace. She was looking for joy. So when Jesus stands by Jacob's well and speaks to this woman, Jesus was drawing from the experience of physical water to go to the experience of living water. The woman was physically thirsty, but the woman was more spiritually in need. 
and from the physical things we see, Jesus entered into a discussion of the spiritual we can't see. So he asked the woman, give me water to drink. Oh, a Jew, a man, and an man. If you know, Jesus said, who is asking you for a drink, you would have said, please give me water. And I would, given, I would have given you the water, living water that wells unto life eternal. And the discussion went on and on. The church in the ancient rite, which we also use now, used the reading of John chapter 4, the story of the Samaritan woman. We use it every most of the third Sundays of Lent because it's the Sunday we call the scrutiny. When we scrutinize those who have been welcome to the church, the catechumen, that will be baptized on Easter Vigil. <coughs> I will tell that story because their search for life the woman's search for life is an example for their search for life, for joy, for inner peace. And that peace only God can give. So at baptism, what happens then? We receive the grace of that living water, the grace of the Holy Spirit. And it comes with theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. That which fills the soul with joy, that which gets us excited in the spirit. Remember what Jesus did during the last day of the Feast of the Tabernacle in John chapter 7. He stood at the, at the gate of the temple and he proclaimed, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink because it is written from his belly shall flow streams of living water. And then the commentary about that text, the addendum to the text said he was speaking of the Holy Spirit which the Father will give to believers. The living water is the grace of the Holy Spirit. And it is what satisfies the soul. It is what gives us the peace of soul. It is what gives us the equanimity of the mind. It is what gives us, is like the balm of, of troubled hearts. The therapy. And we receive the grace of this spirit first at baptism, during confirmation. We are energized to find joy in the Lord. And we live the intentional life of believers, accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, being in communion with the Trinity of love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Such experience beats human imagination. Such experience fills our heart with love and peace that we feel heaven is in our soul. That is what the soul is looking for. And God gives us this message today. Are you thirsty? Are you in need? Are you hungry? We come to Jesus at the Eucharist, asking for the grace to be fed and be satisfied. God love you.